One of the most powerful features of Langchain is it does have the ability to keep or to, to handle memories. And memories are something that has been with ChatGPT since the very, very beginning. And if we look at the actual ChatGPT, you can see a conversation that I had with it here. I tell it over the weekend, I helped my mother-in-law to set up her new computer, memory updated. That always scares me when it says memory updated. It's like, okay, that's going on my permanent record, I guess. Jeff helped his mother-in-law set up her new computer over the weekend. Okay, so it's keeping that as a longer term memory. And all that it's doing is it's taking those longer term memories and putting that into, into the prompt as you, as you say each thing to it. So it's friendly, it just asked me how did that go and I said it worked great. But then I decided to quiz it and I said, okay, I mentioned a mother-in-law, so if I have a mother-in-law, I'm probably married. Um, the proof is here, I guess, but it is, it, it, it actually knows other things from me, some of which might be in that longer term memory. And I know I am in the foundation models. It knows certain things about me, but it says, yes, you're, you're married and your wife's name is Tracy. She's a Missouri public school teacher. So my example may not have been perfect there. I probably should have said I'm some random name and, but nonetheless, you get the, you get the point. It stores these memories. And there's multiple levels of it. When it says memory updated here, that's its longer term memory. It's still not modifying the, fine, the foundation model. It's not like it's fine tuning, but it is probably being added into the prompt somewhere. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use Langchain conversations. And there's a whole variety of different types. And then I'm also gonna show you how to persist the memories so you can basically make a copy of your of the models memory that is being that is going into it it's not really remembering this all that is happening is it's essentially keeping like a notebook of all of its things that it wants to remember and then reviewing those once that notebook fills what happens varies depending on the type of conversation memory that we're actually using. So here we go ahead and load it up. We install the necessary software that we're going to need to actually make use of this. My API key, since I'm running in Colab, is coming for my secrets here, but you will need some sort of a API key if you're going to use OpenAI. So this is where it installs everything. And then we get into Langchain conversations. So we're going to create a conversation. Just like before, you have human messages, system messages, and chat um, AI kind of messages. The system message, that is the system prompt that defines really how this thing is operating. And then human messages are humans messages coming in from the human. And there's another one that we'll see in a moment that is the, the responses back from it. So what I'm doing here is I create this called begin conversation. It's going to start this messages array that holds all of the messages to and from. And then converse basically takes an LLM, the, the conversation that we're, that we're keeping, which is the messages in this case, and then we call, um, we, call, we call the LLM invoke and we append to that output stream. So that array just keeps building up further and further and further. This is really the most simple type of memory that you can have for the large language model because it's fundamentally just this array of, of the conversation that we've seen previously. And here you can see, I actually set it up and initialize it. So I create the open AI, I create the model, which is going to be GPT-4.0. I might have updated this in future versions as less expensive ones come out. And then I can, I can say, hello, what is my name? Um, and this is what I'm basically saying to it. And we see its response. So I say, hello, what is my name? And it says, I'm sorry, but I do not have access to your personal information, such as your name. How can I assist you today? And then I say, nice to meet you. Uh, um, 
well, these are the responses. So I say, oh, sorry, my name is Jeff. And then it says, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And then I ask, what is my name? And it says, your name is Jeff. How can I assist you? Because now it knows it. It's in the flow of conversation. We also probably want to converse with it in Markdown because when it gives us responses back, we uh, sometimes those are formatted in Markdown. We'll also see later on that we can do a lot more than just a notebook here. We can actually use something called Streamlit and we'll create a little chat bot that you type back and forth, like kind of almost like when you're chatting with ChatGPT. So here we get the, the conversation and we, we, we prompt it for, for the, what the human has said and then we get what it has said and it displays the new result in Markdown. So now you can see I'm having the usual kind of conversation with it where I'm giving it, I'm asking what my name is, it doesn't know, and then I introduce myself, and then I ask what my name is, and then I ask a, an actual question. Give me a table of five most populous countries, cities with their country and their population, and you can see this is the markdown. It has created basically a response to you in, in Markdown. And we display it and we get the nice, we get the nice table. We can also give it a, uh, a system prompt. So here you can see I'm giving it a system prompt. You are a helpful agent to answer questions about life insurance. Do not talk about anything else with users. Format your res responses with Markdown. And I say, what is my name? And it says, it, it really gets insistent. I'm, I'm here to help you with questions about life insurance. Um, and I say, okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Jeff. And it very resolutely tells me that it doesn't care what my name is. It's here to answer questions about life insurance. So this is a case where you'd want to, you'd want to maybe refine that system prompt so that it doesn't appear almost rude. But yeah, if you want to talk to it about the latest soccer match or something like that, you're, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to help you. But then when I finally ask it, what is the difference between a term and a whole life policy? It's like, yes, this is why I exist. And it, uh, it answers it. So this is the most basic type of memory that we can see. This is where you just have this list this array list that is keeping all of the responses back and forth with information so that it can tell which is which. Well, thank you for watching the video. We'll definitely get into more complicated methods of keeping chat memory as we progress through this module. Thank you for watching. If this was useful, please give me a like and let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss all my future projects that I do in artificial intelligence.